Hey coders and welcome to episode 2 of our Data Studio Service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In today's episode we're going to be setting the configuration of our community connector. So the top eight methods which we will be implementing to do that are git config, new info, new select single, set ID, set name, add option, new option builder, and finally set date range required. So let's travel on in over to the code to learn how to configure our connector. In the previous episode, we handled the first required function for a community connector, which was git auth type. Now let's move on to the second required function, which is git config. So let's just remind ourselves where we are at within the Data Studio UI. If you recall from the last episode, we were trying to add a new data source to our report. So we went and built out a new community connector. And here it is right here. It's for the Nomics cryptocurrency data. So if we go and click on that right now, it's going to verify that we have authentication. And then once we do, then normally this is where this is the step within the process flow where we would set any additional configuration. But we don't have any co additional configuration. We just have a blank function, a blank git config function right now. So it just says click connect to continue. So if you indeed didn't have any additional configuration, you could just leave this git config function blank or you could do it the more official way and just return a blank config object. So let's do and let's go and do that right now. So we're going to declare a constant called config and then we are going to access our community connector object and then say git config. This is going to create for us a config object which we'll just return as it is just a blank object. And then we'll have to build it out as well. All right, so this should work exactly the same as just leaving this function blank. It should just say click connect to continue and whatever way you decide to do it, both of them perfectly work fine. All right, but let's say that you actually did have some configuration. In our use case scenario, which we are using the Nomics API, we can see if we go into the documentation that there is an option to specify the currency which we are trying to convert into. It says currency to quote ticker price. So let's say that we believe our users aren't going to want to change this at all while they are using the dashboard. Let's say that if we have say some Americans who just want to see all of the cryptocurrency prices in US dollars and they're never going to want to change that into euros or yen or anything like that. So this would be a perfect opportunity to set that configuration before they actually get into the report itself. So let's try and do that right now. So ideally we would want to have say a, a question right here and maybe a form a select element that says which which currency would you like to use to quote your ticker prices and then have a list of options of different currencies that the user could select from. So how can we do that? Well, Google and Google Apps Script and Data Studio provides different configuration types and they are displayed right here. So these are different form elements that you can use. So you can use a text input, a text area, select single, select multiple, a checkbox and an info. And if you need some help in, in understanding what any of these mean, there's also a nice description that follows the enum value. So for our use case scenario, we are going to use the select single, which is an input element, which will be a drop down for a single select options. So let's go and build that out right now. So again, in our git config function, we're going to access our config object and we'll say config dot new select single right here. Again, you can select any one of these if you need a text input or a text area for more flexibility in your responses, you can do that. But again, we are going to use select single. All right, we're going to drop a line to start chaining these together. So once you have uh, specified that you want a select single, there are different option, different methods that you can uh, then chain together. So whenever you have a form element, it's always smart to set an ID. And this ID is what we are going to reference whenever we want to get the data of the response when we are calling the get data function. 
So let's go and first off do that right now. We'll say set ID. This can be anything. So we'll just say currency as our ID. Then what you can do is set a name and this name is going to be what is displayed to the user, the prompt that is displayed to the user before they actually select what they need to select. So uh, this set name will be please select a currency to quote the ticker prices. All right, so we have set the name and we have set the ID. Now let's actually add some options. So the way to add the options that the user can select is by using this method right here, add option. And if we do that, we can see that the required argument for this method is a option builder. It's a data studio app dot option builder. So we're going to need to build out that option. So let's just leave that at right now and build out the option in in a in a in a line right here line 41 so we'll say const we'll say option one because we're going to need a lot of different options again we'll get our config object and we'll say new option builder right here so once we have the option builder there are two things that we are going to need to set the label which is the human readable what is going to be presented to the user on the ui and the value and the value is going to be what is stored within the object which you can reference later. So let's first set the label. We'll say we'll give one option of US dollars, USD. And then our value for that is going to be USD. Because if you recall in the documentation, it's going to need the three letter currency code. So for US dollars, it's USD. And then we will just make a couple more of these options. So let me copy and paste this a couple more times. All right, so the second option, let's just say euros. And then the value for that will be euro. And then the third one will say Japanese yen. And the currency code for that is JPY. And then the last one, we will use pound sterling. All right. So now that we have our four options, oops, let me just change the name of our variables. Then we can start adding those options down here. So we'll say first, we need option one. And then we want option two. And then we'll add another option, option three. And then finally, our last option is going to be option four. And again, you can add as many options or as little options as you want, but we are just going to add four for now. And now that we have those four options in our config, we're going to build that and return that. So let's see how that looks right now. So we're going to update our deployment by going to manage deployments. We're going to edit, we're going to get a new version, deploy that. And now if we go up into our Data Studio UI, refresh the page, then everything should be working. Once we click on add data, we will scroll down to our Nomics community connector. It's going to authenticate and then here we go. So here is where the additional configuration is now displayed. It says, please select a currency to quote the ticker prices. And then if we click on this, then we can see that there are these four options which we specified within our code. So that is pretty dang cool. And by the way, once a user selects any one of these, let's say US dollars, then that is going to be recorded within a request object which we can access in the get, get data function by accepting that request object. And then we can say request dot uh, config params and then we can get our currency from the ID but we'll go into more of that when we look at our get data function all right so that is new select single there's one more thing I want to showcase and that is get info because it is often used so we can also build out we can say config and then we can say new info and if you remember from this uh, from this documentation the info is not so much a form element as, as it is just a static plain text box that can be used to provide instructions and information to the user. 
but the nice thing is that, is that any links will be clickable. So if we wanted to say new info, and then we could say set ID, we could set the ID for this, but we're not going to, we're just going to say set text because we're not going to be referencing this later. But if we, if we say set text and we say something like to learn more about currencies, please go here. And then we link that to say a Wikipedia article on the currencies. We're going to copy that. Then this link, despite it being text, is going to be clickable on the, on the UI itself. So let me just save that just so that we can showcase that. And I'll hit deploy, I'll get a new version. Deploy that. All right, and now if we go in here, refresh the page one more time, we're going to add data. And then we'll scroll all the way down to our community connector. And if we did everything correctly, then here we go, we have our, our single select form element right here. And then we also have now this input or this, this info field right here that says to learn more about currencies, please go here. And then the link is operational and it works. All right, guys, that is all I am going to cover now for Git config. Again, you can use any one of these, any one of these form elements. They all have their own advantages and disadvantages. If you need some more help on this, don't forget to comment down below. But guys, for this video, I hope you liked it and I hope you enjoyed something and I hope you learned something in it as well. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons. It really means a lot and consider checking out the Patreon page if you need more help on your own personal projects. I would be happy to help you in those projects. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video, but I'll see you in the very next episode.